This brand new road bike from Chinese wheel brand Fast Sports looks very familiar, doesn't it? But unlike the Trek Madon SLR, there's no hole in the seat tube. So whether it's for aerodynamics or for air strength compliance, I don't know. Details on the new bike are very light on the ground. It's a prototype bike, so no official details just yet. This wasn't the only interesting bike on display at Ruler Live last weekend though, and in the video, I'll share my personal highlights. Cervelo had not one, not two, but three S5s on display, painted to celebrate Yumbo Visma victories in the three Grand Tours. Pretty amazing, don't you think? Clearly, you can't buy bikes though, which is a real shame, but Cervelo did unveil the brand new limited edition S5 with a paint finish based on the colours of the winning jerseys. So that's yellow, red and pink. Just 600 will be made, so be quick if you want one. Lotus has launched a brand new road bike called the Type 136. It's actually an e-bike. Yes, I know, it doesn't look like an e-bike, does it? The lightweight 300 gram claim motor is in the bottom bracket and the battery is actually in a water bottle and not in a frame as is normally the case. That's because the company wants it to be light enough to ride like a normal bike when you leave the battery at home. Cervelo's S5 were clearly the inspiration for new handlebars while the rear stays are based on a Team GB track bike that both Lotus and Hope Technology developed together. As the name suggests, just 136 bikes will be made and with a price tag of £20,000, you'll have to form an orderly queue. Lotus told me this isn't a one-off though. It's a bold plan to develop a range of bikes alongside its new electric cars. Stay tuned for a deep dive video into the bike very soon. Personally, I still think the Lotus 108 is the best looking bike ever made. And it's incredible just how low the handlebars are. It's like a child's bike. My back hurt just filming it. Designer Paul Smith likes a collab, doesn't he? He's worked with brands like Rafa and others in the past. And his latest were factor bikes for a specially painted Ostro Vam aero bike. Now, I'm a Paul Smith fan. I love his work but I'm not so sure about the design on the bike. Let me know if you agree or disagree by leaving a comment down below. If you do like it though, prices start from just over $9,000 with a Shimano Ortega group set and go up to nearly $12,000 with a SRAM red group set and a parameter. So the bike will go with your Paul Smith suit for sure. UK brand Enigma has an update to its high-end Esker Road gravel bike. It now has full integration and joins a growing number of titanium road and gravel bikes with fully internal routing. They've opted for the Chris King and Envy system as used by fellow tie brand Moots. They use an oversized Chris King headset with an Envy handlebar and stem. The Esca, the road gravel crossover with space for 45 mil wide tires and plenty of mounts for bags and extra bottles. The show bike was built up with a one by Shimano group set, but with amazing in-grid components, rear mech and chain set, which look incredible and give me a strong 90s vibe. The show was my first time seeing a brand new third generation Bianchi Specialissima RC in the flesh. And wow, what a bike. Looks way better with your own eyes than the press photos from a few weeks ago. This is an evolution of the company's lightweight and now increasingly aerodynamic race bike. But, as good as it looks, I personally miss the simplicity of the original. Maybe I'm just getting old. The new bike is claimed to be lightweight, just 6.6 .6 kilos in top end trim, so go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a specialized Tarmac SL8. And that shootout will be really interesting to see, don't you think? The Bianchi Specialist RC and a specialized Tarmac SL8, US versus Italian, lightweight and aerodynamic. Yes, I'll see what I can do. Riley's new Reflex gravel bike is finally ready for production after being seen at events in development form for the last few months. It's a titanium tube bike with investment car sections. So the head tube, bottom bracket, rear dropouts and seat tube junction. And it brings titanium bang up to date in terms of visuals, looking as smooth and sleek and modern as any carbon fiber bike thanks to its full integration. The Reflex is an evolution of the company's Gradient gravel bike. Got big tire clearance, so up to 55 millimeters, 
at loads of mounts for bike packing adventures, but definitely aimed at high performance gravel racing. Without a doubt, the showiest bike on show was the Trek Madone SLR as raced by Mad Pedersen. It's actually the same bike I filmed a few weeks ago, and you see that video linked down below in case you missed it. The one change on this bike is a gold chain and cassette, which look super bling. It's apparently something only a world champion ride get, and no, you can't buy it. I did ask, which is a real shame because I reckon Lowe's would. And it got me thinking, if SRAM can do gold, then surely it can do other colors as well. Red, blue, yellow, yes, please. A new brand for me is Sui Bikes, a Swiss Italian bike company that manufactures its frames in Italy by hand. The frame is apparently made as one entire piece. Often frames are made in sections, two or three, and then bonded together. But this entire frame comes straight out of the mold like this. It's a process they are very proud of and took four years and 50 prototypes to develop. This process also allows the frame to be 100% bespoke from the geometry to the paint finish, or lack of it in this case, to show off the amazing carbon weave. They've also developed their own carbon handlebar to match the frame with full integration as well. It looks really interesting and hopefully I'll get a chance to take a closer look in the future. Italian firm Chanelli has a brand new gravel bike in its range. It's given their steel frame set Columbus Spirit, a suspension head tube and a brand new carbon fork using the same system as on the BMC Urs LT. The suspension unit is developed by an Italian company called High Ride and provides up to 20 mil of travel by a coil spring with a hydraulic damper. A dial on a stem lets you turn it on and off as you need for road and off-road sections. The frame also has bigger tire clearance than before, bringing it right up to date. It's one of my personal favorite bikes from the show and one I'm really excited to ride if I get a chance. At any bike show, you can expect to see some amazing custom paint jobs and this show did not disappoint. I love this new GT grade third generation bike with a strong 90s vibe in the paint finish. This Lav 71 Super 6 Evo looked incredible. I love this specialized tarmac. And how about this? A Canyon Speed Max time trial bike with actual gold leaf all over the frame. Price? Well, if you have to ask. It wasn't all fancy Fandango carbon race bikes with hidden cables and disc brakes though. Oh no, representing the simplicity of a pure road bike, which has arguably been lost in recent years, was this, a beautiful Meteor Works. It's a seven kilogram road bike, which is very impressive when you consider the frame is made from steel and has been shaped by a wind tunnel and computer. It's wearing a Campag group set with the super lightweight Cane Creek brakes and all finished in a British racing green paint. Just lovely. And lastly, this amazing Aston Martin J Laverick state-of-the-art road bike with some incredible details. You can see a full video on this linked on screen right now. And if you enjoyed the video, want more content like this on a regular basis, make sure you hit the subscribe button on screen right now. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching.